Yeah. Welcome, everyone. We'd like to thank you all for coming today, and especially like to give a appreciation to Senator McConnell uh, for his willingness to come and share with us today. We have a number of visitors that are here that I'd like to recognize. We have a number of our elected officials. Um, Judge Johnston, around here somewhere. There he is. Uh, Representative Lewis, he's over there. Uh, Mayor Sandiford, okay. And Mayor Chin, he's over there too. And anybody else that I'm missing? Cece, you there, everybody? I think so. You got Mayor Sandiford, yes. Yep. I believe so, sir. Well, thank you all for coming and to be with us so that we can uh, Hear from the center, that's important for us, we want to do that. Ohio County Healthcare uh, has been affected significantly by this uh, pandemic, as have most healthcare organizations. We're very appreciative of the senator and of Congress for generating some funds to help get us through this. We've gotten some significant monies, both from advanced Medicare payments, from the payroll protection program, as well as just general stimulus, public funds to help us uh, through this process. Without that, we could not have stayed in business the way we are. We appreciate very much that, uh, that commitment, and we know that it's going to continue on into the future. So we are appreciative of that. I'm also very appreciative of Senator McConnell's office staff, who have been very helpful to us, uh, particularly as it relates to testing issues. We've had a number of those testing issues, and they've been very helpful trying to help us figure out what we can and can't do. So we appreciate that very much. As we move forward, we look, we look forward to continuing to grow our business as we return to a level of normalcy that's, that we're not sure what that's gonna look like. Uh, but we are seeing patients coming back. We're seeing a lot of significantly ill patients coming back. Uh, not COVID patients, but uh, patients who have put off their healthcare services are now in, in dire straits. And, it's going to tax our health care system going forward. So, Senator, we need continued assistance. We, we appreciate that very much. What we'd like to do, uh, let me announce kind of what's going to happen today. Uh, we're going to next hear from Dr. Skiba, uh, our chief medical officer, Joshua Skiba. He's a cardiologist at Ohio County Healthcare. He's going to share a few comments of what it's like uh, to be in this in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, following him, we're, we're pleased to have Hilda Legg from the USDA. Uh, who will be here and she will be speaking to us and we appreciate very much her uh, ability to be here with us today. Uh, following that, uh, then we're going to turn the time over to Lloyd Spivey, our board chairman. And uh, I, I should also recognize we've got several board members that are here and we appreciate them. Mr. Spivey will then introduce the senator to us. So, Dr. Skiba. Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity this morning to take a few minutes to discuss how COVID-19 has affected our community uh, and our hospital, particularly from the perspective of the healthcare workers. This certainly has been a period of uncertainty for us as well. We've continued to evolve our daily operational procedures as we've received continued evolving guidance from federal, state, and local levels. Uh, the term standard operating procedure seems to have flown straight out the window. Nothing seems to be standard for very long anymore. Of course, this strains a large uh, organization. Uh, every one of our uh, health care providers is not immune from the stress of the uncertainty, just like, like everyone else. Yet every single one of our providers and our uh, associates remain committed to a new vision a new mission working together uh, to innovate our services as well as to provide additional layers of safety, uh, protecting our staff and our community members from COVID-19. We've also partnered with local businesses to uh, give them the resor resources that they've required to truly keep their employees healthy at work. We are a small hospital. We have a handful of hospitalists we have one specialist generally for every specialty, and so contingency planning has been very important for us. If we were to have a surge of infections throughout our organization, it could be debilitating to say the least. 
We are a major healthcare center, a major hub within a wide radius. We serve multiple counties. We are also a major employer and economic center for this community. So it has been absolutely vital that we've stayed operational over the last five months, as it will remain vital that we stay operational today, tomorrow, and in the years to come. With that said, we've lost nine members of our community to COVID-19. We feel that, every single one of them. In this small community, they're not just our patients, but they are also our family members. Every life lost is deeply felt. And that is why we continue to strive every day to fight this virus. I am privileged to work aside true healthcare heroes and I'm proud of the work that we've done at Ohio County Hospital. Every day, working around me in the face of a pandemic, unlike anything we've ever seen before, they continue to deliver the same outstanding care here that this organization, this hospital has built its reputation around. But I still remain optimistic, despite everything that we've been through, despite all the divide that you see on the TV, anytime you turn on your computer, your cell phone, we are still all Americans. We are a strong people with great resolve and together, I believe, I know we will beat this virus. Thank you. Good morning. Take off this mask. I'm Hilda Legg, the State Director for Rural Development, and I am delighted to be in Ohio County this morning. Senator, it's always good to have you back home in Kentucky, and we appreciate everything you do. You know, you and I traveled to Ohio County about 15 so years, 16 years ago together, so thank you for coming back home to be with us. Representative Lewis and Two County Judge Johnstone, to all of you who provide leadership for this community, we really appreciate what you do, and we at Rural Development are so pleased to be your partner in making this a wonderful place to call home. And so I want to tell you just a bit about Rural Development because it's about making strong rural communities and you can't make strong rural communities unless you provide good health care to the citizens of that community. But rural development also does other things. I'll tell you about the ABCs, A being affordable housing. I think it's important that you know that in the last three and a half years of this administration, we have given 124 families in Ohio County a chance to turn a house into a home at the investment of over $12 million here in Ohio County. And that's the A. The B is for our business programs. Our business programs help businesses to uh, have technical assistance, get small loans and grants to create jobs. So very important for our rural communities. In Ohio County, we put a $217,360 investment into it. And in the entire Commonwealth of Kentucky, we have put in three and a half years of the Trump administration, $180 million in rural businesses. So the C is for community programs. And right here in Ohio County, your wastewater treatment plant, your uh, sewage treatment plant, all of those are investments from our WEP program. And today we have a wonderful community facilities announcement to make. And all together we have invested in Ohio County, again in this administration, $23.6 million from your tax dollars back home here in Ohio County. Now the project we are celebrating today and I know the gentleman you just heard from is really excited. We were talking about it, and Mr. Piper was as well. Is an investment in a new surgical wing to your hospital. This is a 20,000 square foot facility, multiple operating rooms and patient rooms, and it is going to bring you the state of the art technology, which your fellow citizens right here in Ohio County truly, truly deserve. Now, this is a loan. We at Rural Development do loans and grants, as you all know, and the loan is $21.5 million for a total $22.3 million project, so the locals have invested. But let me tell you what this really means in terms of you, the people of Ohio County. Because we at Rural Development are able to provide a longer term for your loan, because we are able to provide lower interest rates, and thankfully the Senator continues to help us appropriate money into our rural development programs, that this partnership 
which is what we really try to do is work with our local communities, is going to save the Ohio County taxpayers an excess of $7 million. That's something to celebrate, and we at Rural Development just want you to know we cherish our partnerships with you because when rural communities are strong and then our country of America is strong because of the fundamental values that you represent. So, Mr. Piper, would you come forward and let me present to you on behalf of uh, this administration and Kentucky's USDA Rural Development to the Ohio County Public Facilities Corporation, your commitment to the health and well-being of your community is to be commended. The $21.5 million USDA Rural Development investment will be used to construct a new 23,000 square foot surgical center to meet the increased needs, health needs of your citizens. Congratulations and thank you so much, thank you very much. for partnering with us. We appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Thank, thank you all. Well, first, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, this is a momentous occasion for the hospital. Uh, it's something we really need and have needed for a long, long time. Uh, I've been on this board now for 35 plus years, I guess. Uh, and we continue to grow, and that's what it's about. Serving Ohio County health care, serving the needs of the people. Um, want to first recognize uh, our board members that we have present uh, if we can, for just a moment, I'd like to recognize uh, Beth Lunsford, Beth, uh, Kelly Rowe, Ka uh, Carl Wallace, and Jim Duke. Uh, we appreciate them coming out and being here with us today. Our speaker actually doesn't need any introduction. He has been uh, well known to Ohio County and the state for a long, long time. In fact, I haven't seen him in a long time. Once upon a time, we used to interview him on the radio when he would come roaring through. Um, so without any further ado, let me introduce the senior senator from, the United, from Kentucky, Mitch McConnell. Debt. That in itself, my friend, 
is concerning because that gives us a debt the size of our economy for the first time since World War II. And my view after having done that was that we needed to push the pause button for a few months, see how what we did do was working, see what happened in the economy as we began to open it up again, and then take another look at it. So that's where we are now, but let's look back at the CARES Act for a minute. And I wanted to particularly congratulate the folks here at the Ohio County Hospital for their aggressive approach to taking full advantage blame of the CARES Act. The CARES Act had several different components. Uh, looking at it from a Kentucky point of view, it put cumulatively $12 billion into our state about two billion to state government, about a billion into hospitals and healthcare providers, and the very popular PPP small business loan program, which is really not a loan because if you maintain your employment, you don't have to pay it back. Over 50,000, 50,000 Kentucky small businesses access $5.2 billion from the small business PPP loan program. So Blaine and his team here, being pretty shrewd, took advantage of several different avenues. The uh, looking at just looking at Ohio County, uh, Blaine and his team got $4.8 million out of the overall health care provider fund, $4.8 million. And then on top of that, he accessed a $4.6 million PPP loan. So very smartly took advantage of two different avenues to help with this hospital. The governor and I had worked on a Medicaid settlement from which I think you all benefited for about $4 million as well. So this top team here at this hospital didn't miss an opportunity to take advantage of any of the provisions that were in the CARES Act. So we pumped $12 billion into Kentucky. And the question is, where do we go from here? In my opinion, we need another rescue package. What I've recommended is about a trillion dollars more. And again, we're talking about trillions, not billions, that would be allocated in the following ways. The first item would cost the government nothing. That is to provide liability protection for the coronavirus only beginning in 2019 and running forward for four years to protect hospitals, doctors, nurses, university presidents, and uh, universities and K through 12 and businesses from being sued, adding a epidemic of lawsuits on top of the pandemic we're already wrestling with. So unless you were grossly negligent or engaged in intentional misbehavior, you could not be successfully sued for your efforts to combat the pandemic. Second focus would be on kids in school, not that we in Washington ought to dictate whether you go back in person or remotely, that's a decision for the local school boards, but a significant over $100 billion chunk for schools, both K through 12 and colleges. We need a replenishment of the PPP loan program because some of these loans are running out some of the small businesses may still fail now if they don't get another slug. More assistance for hospitals. Another $1,200 check for low-income people, particularly been hit hard by the pandemic, especially those who work in the hospitality field at hotels and restaurants. That's what I recommended. Didn't come here today to be a partisan, but the House passed a $3 trillion package, which included a whole variety of different things that have nothing whatsoever to do with the coronavirus. For example, 
providing a tax cut for rich people in places like New York and California, which obviously has nothing to do with the coronavirus. So as you can imagine, we're pretty far apart. And I can't tell you today whether we're going to be able to come together uh, as we did back in March and April. I think the reason we're having a harder time now is because we're a lot closer to the election. The partisan passions which we were able to put aside in March and April are rising again and making it more difficult to get there. But we're going to keep trying and hope that even this close to an election, we can put the American people ahead of our competitive juices that are flowing and trying to win uh, the fall election. Now look, I want to close with this. The coronavirus is not involved in the election and it's not going away until we get a vaccine. Yesterday I was in Northern Kentucky up in Covington at a fabulous company involved in conducting clinical trials on vaccines and treatment innovations that are underway. Many of you remember the World War II term Manhattan Project. What that meant was a total focus on trying to get the atomic bomb in order to end the war in Japan because it was estimated an invasion of Japan would cost us a million American lives. Well, they were in a hurry to end the war and save American lives. It succeeded. And we've got the same kind of Manhattan Project focus on getting to a vaccine. Many of the very large pharmaceutical companies are already producing doses before the clinical trial is even over. If it's looking optimistic, they don't want to start from ground zero on producing doses. So let's talk about doses for a minute. If we get one or more vaccines, and I hope we get many, we're going to need a massive number of doses, not just for our country, but for the whole world. This is a disease afflicting the entire world. So this Manhattan Project is underway with total focus. I don't know how soon we'll get there. You've heard estimates from late this year, early next year. We're all hoping for an announcement uh, as soon as possible. In the meantime, I'm often asked, what can you do? And you all are doing it. The only way to prevent the spread between now and the time we get a vaccine is to wear a mask and practice social distancing. I do think we're making some headway in convincing everybody that's what we need to do. Because we've had a resurgence, not only here in Kentucky, but in other states. And so we, we're not going to shut the economy down again. Not going to happen. Dr. Fauci has said, we're not going to do it again. He's not going to recommend that again. Because as we all know, getting shut up at home created a whole different set of problems. For example, you were hit by the electric surgery ban, right? Well, these guys will tell you, they don't make any money on Medicare or Medicaid. The only thing that keeps them from having red ink is elective surgery. So they were out of the elective surgery business for what, two and a half months, three? Yeah. Okay, so that drives their bottom line down. And what about the people whose health care needs are not being met? Who had needs for an operation or some other procedure that was caught under the ban? They were not treated during that period. All of this by way of saying, we're not going to shut the economy down again. That, that just can't happen. So we have to work our way through it. And the only way to work our way through it is to try to prevent to spread by wearing a mask and practicing social distancing. So I'm here today to thank all these healthcare heroes over here who've done a heck of a good job here in Ohio County. And I'll be happy to take a couple of questions if there are any. So Senator, you, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned the thing that was really built uh, earlier in the year of March. So with the, the analysis from the Golden Sachs uh, recently uh, came out and said that the loss of the extra six hundred dollars in unemployment benefits would have cost, but that's been cost, but that's have a cost of severe setback in uh, personal in, in personal spending. Yeah. It could be a bunch of setback. What, what do you made that? Well, I, I, I should have mentioned that. We do need another extension. Unemployment is basically a state program, 
but what we provided was a, a bonus on top of it. What we learned about the $600 figure in the original CARES Act, <coughs> excuse me, was that it provided the opportunity for a, a significant number of people to make more money staying at home and going back to work. That did expire. We would like to continue that at either three or four hundred dollars. The president, uh, the uh, president issued an executive order two weeks ago, providing an opportunity for governors, at no cost to state, to add three hundred or four hundred on top of basic unemployment insurance. Governor Bashir has taken advantage of that. I recommended that he do that. He did, and so that will cover about five weeks. <coughs> but we still need an unemployment fix. And in addition to that, the bill that I laid out as a starting place would include another uh, $1,200 check to low-income people. So I should have covered unemployment. I think it is important. We have high unemployment. Uh, we ought not to, however, encourage people not to go back to work by having too much. Okay, well, thank you everyone. Appreciate your coming.